Welcome to Wellbeing with Manny in conversation with. What we hear and listen to throughout our day can shape how we feel. If we feed and nourish our soul with wholesome conversations from everyday people filled with positive stories, we may feel less alone and even inspired. We're all working through our own stuff and sometimes you need to hear that you are doing amazing, which you are. Wellbeing with Manny in conversation with is listening to others talk about how they have journeyed life so far, how they keep their well-being in check and how they keep their mindset positive. This is not always possible, but sometimes they share some really good tips on how they improve their well-being just for those days when they're not feeling quite the ticket. Welcome to this Wellbeing with Manny in conversation with community. I really just wanted to build something special that people can feel part of, feel seen and feel valued. Some of the people we speak to have really inspirational stories and hopefully it can resonate with you, make you stop, reflect and also just pick up some top tips along the way. So thank you again for being here and thanks for sharing your time with us. Here's the show. Hi everyone, just jumping in to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this series of Wellbeing with Manny in conversation with, and that's the amazing IA Hair and Beauty. Now, I don't know about you, but as someone who has a very busy life with lots going on, an hour hair or beauty appointment can feel like a real treat, an absolute essential non-negotiable bit of self-care. Sometimes I know that all I need is a fresh French manicure to make me feel a bit brighter. I don't think we should underestimate these little acts of kindness and the impact that they have in our busy lives. So we have a special treat for you, a 15% one-time code across all the IA hair and beauty range. So if that's a gel polish or beautiful nail art and you just need to jump over to Instagram to see the amazing nail art that Isabel does or a fresh new trim or colour then IA Hair and Beauty is the best. Go to IA Hair and Beauty on Instagram or Facebook and DM Isabel quoting the podcast for your 15% off treat. Enjoy! Welcome back to Wellbeing with Manny in conversation with, thank you so much for coming back and listening each week. You're very welcome here. Um, And today we're on tour again. We're in the playroom Um, and we're also on tour in the UK welcoming our wonderful guest today, live from Edinburgh. (laughs) (laughs) So today we welcome the really lovely, I was going to say very old friend, but that makes you sound old, but I don't mean that you're old. I mean, you know, I've known you a while. This is Paul Socket. Hi, Paul. Hello. Hello, Manny. And hello, listeners. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, Paul, would you like to introduce yourself and tell everyone who you are and what it is that you do? Yeah, I am Paul Socket. I um, called myself an actor for 15 years and then 2020 happened and uh, work that I've done on the inner self um, has meant that I now resonate more with the word storyteller. So I am Paul Socket. I am a storyteller. Um, I am also a coach and a workshop leader um, around stuff and the stories we tell through the things that we keep. I, uh, am, I identify as a multi-potentialite and an empath. Um, so I have lots of different varying interests instead of uh, being a specialist. And again, that's something we can talk about. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm very much a, a wanderer of the world. I'm, uh, I, wherever I am is home to me. Um, and that is a, a relatively new experience, though, through touring as an actor. Uh, that has been a, a nice little segue, a, a low state segue into navigating that space Mm, yeah I love that it's nice to to hear people using touring as a really positive thing as well we often hear some real stories about touring being quite tough and actually when you tour with no expectation that you have a base or a home that where you are is your home is a really lovely way of reframing that's kind of gem one and we're only a couple of minutes in (laughs) um gosh what we give you um Lovely. Thank you for that. Um, so as you know, 
because I know that you've listened to some episodes because you're a big fan, which is mm-hmm. not, not a big mm-hmm. fan, you know, small fan. Um, big fan. Big fan. <laughs> <laughs> long, long time listener was it, was it <laughs> long time listener first time caller there you go. <laughs> love that thank you caller um so we always ask um what does well-being mean to you so that's what i'd love to ask you and you just told me you're gonna ask me that question and i forgot I already did. <laughs> um, <laughs> and i could see his mind going <laughs> it's such, I mean, it's, such mm. it's massive well, I think what's really important, actually, is just to acknowledge that in this moment, well-being means to me that that gets to change. But in this moment, well-being to me is about lowering the stakes and acknowledging that that doesn't mean that we're failing or that we're doing something wrong or that we need an easy way to do something in order to validate our existence. I think well-being is, um, is, is making choices based in alignment with our values, even when we are in a system, and we are always in a system that does not reflect those values. Well, I say that unless our values are in alignment with that system, in which case that's in alignment. So that just gets to be true. Not good, bad, right or wrong, just true. Um, Returning to self and whatever that ends up looking like for each individual, because it all gets to be different. And, and therefore, well-being to me is the acceptance that everyone's journey, though similar, is different. Mm. Well, that was pretty beautiful for like not knowing what you were going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, I, this... Um, we, we were just chatting before about, um, you know, what what listeners kind of want and, and what people come here for. And something that I think comes up all the time is um, living in alignment with core values. It's something that a lot of people say. It's something that we seem really aware of. Um, but it's really interesting to look at that from a point of view of, you know, we can have core values that we want to align with. But what about the external factors? You know, that's mm-hmm. quite an interesting thought process, isn't it, that actually society sometimes or the current moment we're living in or something that's happened in the world just makes that not work for us I think that's really interesting um something that you've said a couple of times which I really want to pick up on is about lowering the stakes Mm -hmm. um so you mentioned it when you were talking about not having a base not having necessarily thinking somewhere is home that home is where you are right now and that feels like a low stakes thing for you and then you were saying about in terms of sometimes well-being can be about lowering the stakes in a world where at the moment it feels like we have to achieve so much and be so much and it's all top of the game and climbing the ladder I really just wanted to ask you about that level of kind of lowering and and kind of that base level being yeah uh happy to talk about it I for me lowering the stakes is it's not about cheating it's not about getting something done regardless because that ties in more with the productivity force graft uh, hustle culture thing that we have been born into and are told is the most important thing um that the amount of energy we expend uh adds to our value and, and i don't believe that's true so for me, when I find myself in a moment of vulnerability, and that can be anything from losing someone down to um, down to being being in a in a uh, relationship with someone and um, finding someone else attractive as you walk down the street, or trying to choose which pen to use which for some reason can feel vulnerable sometimes because you're like, am I going to ruin this paper by using a ballpoint pen or a fountain pen, right? All those things do require vulnerability because for some reason we've attributed meaning to the result of that thing. Mm. So lowering the stakes for me is what's the easiest access point? What's the way in which I get to acknowledge what I need And then within the context of the situation that I'm in, 
how is that possible? Mm. So it really, for, for me, it's really important for me to describe what I mean by, by needs, because I believe we all have a different definition of every word that exists based on our lived experience. Yeah. And so this is a, an invitation into clear communication. So if, if I say a word and you're like, well, I know what I know, well, I know what I mean by that word. I'm going to ask them what they mean by that word so I can hear that word through their lens, which increases my ability to be empathetic. Need to me are four things. Our basic human needs, shelter, sustenance, so food, water, you know, nutrition, um, sleep or rest, rest specifically. It doesn't have to mean sleep, but it, I like the SSSS. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and and connection to the self or others mm. and so those are the really the only four things we can ever sacrifice we can't we can't sacrifice someone else's time we can't sacrifice someone else's shelter or or how, what they eat and how we can only ever sacrifice those things so if i acknowledge what of those things and it might be more than one that i need in a moment there is a way in every moment that I get to have some portion of that, that I get to make a choice that honors that need. And it might not, you know, I, I might think that self-connection is um, uh, needing a holiday, but, but external outside of ourselves is not the need. The need is for the things that a holiday can offer us. It might be pe uh, quiet moments of quiet it might be um connecting with the elements of being by the sea or in a forest or have my feet in the earth or uh, being in the air those are the things that are our needs the thing like i need money that's not a need we money is important in this system that we exist within however money is not a need what we need is shelter. And in order for that, we simply need money to provide us with shelter. So if we go straight to needing money, we don't get specific. We just assume that we need money because we were told money is important, but we don't really know what for. So if we buy the thing that, and this is how we get into the streamlining, claim your space, you know, relationships with stuff is if I just say I need money, then I spend it on the things that really are externally for other people. They're validating to other people. They're protecting of ourselves because someone else can relate that thing to how successful I am, to mm. how healthy I am. If I bought the organic hemp yoga mat, then I must be super healthy. I must be great and, and centered and aligned and grounded and not necessarily. Mm. So if we acknowledge the need we have and then sometimes that requires money for that to be satisfied. That's the different relationship. Because then we get to be specific about how much we need. Because yeah. if we just say, I need money, we go, well, I need more. I need the Scrooge McDuck swimming in coins money. Whereas we might go, oh, I need, I need to cover my rent this month mm -hmm. to provide me with shelter. That is X amount automatically though that might feel difficult feels much more accessible than going i need money in my life mm. so it's it's always about coming back to what's true in this moment mm. very powerful and i really like your consideration on on language and understanding what the other person means we've had that a couple of times with some of the chats that we've had i'll say something and you might respond with just going to clarify what is it that you mean when you say and I really like that way of working because it, it does there's no room for error there and I think in the in the kind of modern way that we communicate sometimes text email there's never a context there's never a tone there's never anything and actually having that instant hearing something and then thinking actually I might be wrong there. I'm just going to absolutely clarify is really it's really powerful and it's really important um Something that I, I wanted to obviously ask you about is is the amazing work that you're doing in your claim your space um world where you're kind of really holding space for other people and 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 
introducing this kind of world of streamlining and and it, it'd be amazing to hear you talk about that because also the there may well be and we'll put links to all this in the description may well be people who are feeling like they would love some support with that and to hear you talk about it might really inspire some people to to have a look into this or 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 check out the work that you do yeah well um so claim your space is the container for um for what I call streamlining and the reason that it is not yeah. called minimalism yeah. or uh, organization or you know the Marie Kondo process or <laughs> is that <clears throat> and and I say that with a little bounce of flippancy <laughs> whilst also acknowledging that a lot of people have found some uh, what's the word I want to use? Yeah. Ease. They found some release. They found some something of movement. And I'm and I'm all for making choices that allow us to feel something different because mm. we get to notice the difference. Yeah. So for those that those processes work for in this in this moment and have and for however long, fine, absolutely fine. Yeah. Um, to me and for me, those processes are about decisions. And this is where I explain what I mean by decisions and why I don't use the word decision and why I use the word choice. <laughs> because decision means to cut away. So like incision is to cut in. Decision yeah. is to cut away. <clears throat> And so for me, energetically, the image that I have is that I have a table of all my options. And what I have to do if I'm going to decide is swipe all but one thing off the table. Mm. There is a dismissal to everything else. Yeah. And so within that, we have commitment. We therefore have loyalty to this one thing that we have left because there is a real energetic sacrifice that happens that i'm going to die on this hill mm. and, and and that doesn't feel good to me yeah so the reason i use choice is because using that same analogy i have all my options on the table and in this moment i ask myself what's true in this moment what do i need how can i have that thing or how can i action that choice not how can i have that thing but how can i action that choice I choose the thing that allows me to, to fulfill that need I have. And I use it for as long in however I need to use it. And then when I have a need for a new choice, I get to put that thing back on the table in the place that it was. And I get to have everything in front of me still. Yeah. Equally valid, but not everything is suitable for everything. So it just gets to be there. And we get to acknowledge it as our stuff. Yes. I don't use the word junk, trash, clutter, mess. They're all negative terms to shame us that the things we have are bad. Yeah. And the reason we got them is bad. Mm. And it's and I call BS on that. Yes. Because it just absolutely is not true. And for me, <laughs> some people may believe that. And that's fine. Yeah. But for me, I don't, I don't adhere to that belief system. So, th so the work, the reason I use streamlining is that we all have a vessel. Mm. We all travel through space with the stuff that we have. Streamlining is the idea that yes, we all have a vessel, but my vessel gets to be specific to my needs and wants in any given moment. Mm. so sometimes that's having fewer things sometimes that's having more things depending on how my interests change depending on how my family life changes depending on how my location changes and so I just get to streamline my vessel to meet the conditions to allow me to move smoothly and gracefully through the landscape mm. I don't have to have the biggest boat I don't have to have the fanciest boat. I don't have to have the smallest boat with the fewest things. Yeah. That doesn't mean you win at stuff. Yeah. 
the idea of that is balmy so so streamline in so many ways doesn't necessarily mean streamlining to make things smaller to make it less than right streamlining is shaping yeah streamlining is shaping your vessel not making it smaller it's not carving away it's shaping what you need in each moment yeah acknowledging that your vessel gets to change without you having to like break the whole thing down you get to change a plank at a time I can't remember the there's a uh, like a philosophical theory about if you change a boat or a ship one plank at a time and it's still at sea is it the same boat and I'm like if it's carrying you (laughs) yes right so this is the thing it's not like if you make a choice you're going to put a hole in the thing we always think we're building from the bottom and so like if we take a plank it's going to be from like the most important place so by lowering the stakes we get to go do i take this shiny placard which is serving no actual purpose on this ship but do i take do i want this shiny placard the ease of access to that piece rather than do i change the entire hull of my boat Mm -hmm. allows us access to making those choices Mm -hmm. And it means we get to witness the vessel that we are traveling in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I wonder if I can, I can, I don't know whether this is taking a step further with it or or moving into a slightly different place, but what about the, what about the stuff that doesn't serve us? What about the stuff that we need to let go of? So I'm seeing mm. the kind of streamlining process and I'm, I'm, I'm loving that thought process. And, and I know that, for my own like mind (laughs) I try to do a little mind streamline every every evening because my mind feels full so much of the time and I'm sure so many people resonate with that and knowing what I need to necessarily thinking of what I need to think about in that moment and what I don't but it it might be something that I do need to keep on to because it's something that I kind of need to to use tomorrow or whatever and trying to compartmentalize that on paper which is what I do a lot of having having a journal by my bed but the stuff that we carry that is unhelpful and stuff that we need to let go of is that in the same realm or is that a different boat (laughs) we only have one boat boat. (laughs) is what I believe that's what I believe yeah so there's something very interesting that you said where, where you said the things I need to let go of And so I offer a reframe Mm -hmm. because I don't believe there is anything we need to let go of. Okay. We live in a dichotomous society. So we're told that less is more, but we're told that the marker of success is more. So we're constantly trying to to navigate this impossible scenario where whatever end I choose, I fail, I lose. Yeah. So what I notice is that what we constantly try to do is not fail. Yeah. It's very different to embracing a space where we get to thrive. Mm. And for me, thriving is acknowledging that whether you keep the thing or not, you are enough. Yeah. So those things that feel difficult to hold so if we are stepping into an emotional space, like the journaling, the thoughts of things to do, yeah. we step into that space in the context of streamlining. <clears throat> and we are practicing relinquishing the need to let it go or to get rid or yeah. to have it not with us. The reframe that I offer is that those things are here for us and were things that we chose at one point to provide us with safety and control okay. that we learned when we were in our formative years, the, the way in which we could have some semblance of control and agency, because in so many ways, children have their agency taken from them. Hmm. Don't take that bear, take this bear on holiday. Don't do that. Do this. Um, oh, if you do that, you'll hurt yourself. All of these things remove agency from a child's life. And so we all navigate our spaces to find the way in which we feel some semblance of control, but ultimately safety. Mm. So those patterns that feel unhealthy, the reason or part of the reason that that might feel unhealthy now 
is that it isn't that there is an intuitive feeling that that doesn't align with your values anymore. It doesn't align with your needs anymore. Mm. So that doesn't inherently make it wrong. It makes it information. Because if we say something is wrong, that's an answer. That's something that we've been told to find. Answers are meanings. And if I, if I go, oh, right, uh, I've got this, this unhealthy pattern that I've got. And that, and that means that I'm, I'm mean. That means I'm selfish. That means I'm uh, failing. That means, I, that means I'm. And all of those rules are from outside of us. Mm. So we're living by a rule system that really was not built for us. <laughs> and also doesn't exist. Like we yeah. see multiple examples of people breaking those rules and not being held accountable. Yeah. So why are we being the hardest that we can possibly be with ourselves? Why do we deserve that treatment? Mm. We don't. Yeah. And the messaging that we do was not designed for us it was not designed to help or protect or be of service to us yeah so my reframe offer is that whenever you notice the wording that is similar to or exact i need to let go of this thing i need to get rid of this thing there are multiple questions you can ask you say why do i think that is because that returns to now. In this moment, why do I think that is? Mm. We, can, um, we can speak to that wording that we've used. And um, uh, we can say, what, what am I here to learn? What is this here to teach me? What do I notice that feels true? What doesn't feel true? Because, and I was speaking to someone about this yesterday, this idea that we, we lump, and actually I, this is part of this kind of streamlining when we get to things like books and uh, musical instruments and you know, things that we gather. I do what we call lumping. And so these patterns that we have, we assume we lump. And so every component of that pattern becomes bad. It becomes toxic. It becomes unhealthy. And so how can we even think about starting to establish a new pattern if this one pattern, everything within it is wrong? Because part of this new healthy pattern that we've done the inner work, we've done some time with, and we, we think, oh, actually, this is, this is how I feel like I want to step into the world right now. Some of those components are going to be mirrored within the specific little bits and bobs and the nuts and bolts of this unhealthy pattern. Mm. So that makes it, that makes it really difficult to navigate. Cause you're like, well, how do I have this without these really important parts of this new healthy pattern that are somehow lumped into what I deem an unhealthy pattern? Yeah. So if we lower the stakes and lowering the stakes often is about being curious, mm -hmm. what can I be curious about in this moment? Because curiosity is always there. Because that's some of the work that I'm doing. Like I, I, I learned to sacrifice as my pattern, as my way to be safe. That if I sacrificed myself mm -hmm. for other people's ease and other people's uh, well-being, then I was valid. That I was validated for existing, even. <laughs> and... Um, and I learned that be so, so that, so my childhood trauma, I suppose, it meant that I was hyper vigilant. I became aware of everything because I was trying to protect from the attacker that didn't really necessarily exist, but just to go, all right, I sense this person's here and they're feeling this. And so that person's over there and I need to keep them apart or I need to go and fix this problem. <clears throat> And that's required and still requires a lot of work because there are stories that I tell that have morphed over the years because they, they learn the ways to slip through the systems. Yeah. But every time 
I improve or I, I improve my self-care system or I improve uh, the, 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 the space I hold for those stories to exist, the more ingrained foundational ones, they find the little, it's like water, drop it on a roof and it will find the cracks. It will find those little ways through. Yeah. So, so if, I, if I imply <clears throat> or decide in that energy it's very decidey yeah if i decide that those stories are wrong then it means i'm in, eternally in battle with those stories mm. and so what i'm looking for is the attacker rather than looking for the looking for the story that exists for a reason yeah. and for a really good reason that you sought safety and control to some degree when you were a child. Hmm. And so that story exists because of it. Yeah. So what if we welcome someone who just has a story to tell? We don't have to allow that story to be the filter through which we make choice. We just get to acknowledge that that part of us gets to exist. So it's not about needing to let go of that part of ourself. It's about how can I learn to listen to that voice mm. and still feel like I have the agency to make a different choice. Yes. Which I'm sure, because I have I have multiple moments of this where I think, I want to vomit. That sounds terrifying and huge. And yeah. what, like, what are you even talking about? Lowering the stakes is the thing I come back to. Yeah. How can I be curious in this moment of vulnerability? What can I look, what can I listen to? What is, what feels possible to listen to in this moment? Mm. I, I, I love the, the so much in that. And I would really advise everybody to just go back and just listen to that again. Cause I do think it needs, it's some, like for me, I know I will when we finish recording, cause it's, there's so much in that to take and to, to, to help. And I, I don't know if learn from is the right way to put it, but that's how it feels in this moment to say, to, to kind of learn. As you're kind of talking about that, something that's kind of coming into my mind that I'm wondering whether we've been told for so long, you know, about negative talk and like negative self-talk and how unhelpful it is and how wrong it is and we shouldn't. And, you know, we come back to what you said about, you know, we should all be enough. And I absolutely hope and believe that for everyone. But I wonder how we use your offer of reframing Um to navigate those things because when when something seeps into our mind that's negative self-talk how I wonder how we can then use that information to help us bring that out in a different way does that make some kind of sense where I'm going with that because I think that's kind of but I I, yeah that's one thing I'm kind of as I'm as I'm listening I'm kind of thinking in terms of stuff that's maybe happened to you or uh you know maybe unhelpful relationships or anything that all makes total sense and it's something that I really feel like I'm gonna try to 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 think about when I'm in those moments but the kind of intrusive negativity that some people experience could be daily could be on the hour using that information that then comes into their mind to to vessel through in a curious way asking you know if someone has a particular thought comes through the curiosity could then go what what, why are you thinking like that what what in this moment is making you think that and also where's the evidence for you thinking that those could be some questions you go down is that the would we offer that as 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 something potentially because that seems to now be making a bit more sense to me Mm. Well, and so if we're lowering the stakes, yeah, it's actually in those moments where <laughs> at least where... we know that where you are is being cleaned because we can hear some hoovering. Yeah, just the big old hoovers started. <laughs> um, Love that. How loud is that for you? Because this is, is where the... we get to make a new choice. <laughs> the new choice is we're just, it's actually not that loud at all. It's fine. Okay. Well, I'll continue talking, and if you need to edit this out, then totally fine. (laughs) Anyway. um, 
So in those moments, this is really going to test my ability to have focus here. So, oh, we can talk about multitasking and how that isn't a thing. And that's, that's, that's just part of productivity yeah. conditioning. But anyway, that's a different thing. <laughs> so what, what, I, what I invite <clears throat> is, is if we ask ourselves, how can we lower the stakes? Ask ourselves the question, how can I further lower the stakes? Because mm. actually, when we say we'll lower the stakes, we, we don't really, or we, or, we do, or we don't think how low can we go. Yeah. Apart from limbo competitions, the lowest you can go is generally seen as a bad thing. Yeah. How can I make this thing most easeful for myself? Is something that we're taught to that is lazy. Yeah. Um, Comes back to your language thing, doesn't it? Right. And so, what I encourage, what I invite, is actually when you when you wake up in the morning, when you wake up in the morning, your choices begin. Mm -hmm. The, the moments of vulnerability begin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just for people who aren't watching, Paul can't stop laughing at the hoovering that's going on around him, but we're finding it hysterical on this side. And it's really not that loud. It's quite, it's quite comical. It's adding to the, um, it's adding to the chat. We love it. It's, it's sketch worthy. Let's just put it like that. Anyway, um, <laughs> so so our moments of vulnerability begin from when we wake up, mm -hmm. and those are really the spaces. What do I have for breakfast this morning? Yeah, is to some degree a moment of vulnerability because what we start to do is we try to work out the destination of our day. Mm. and we try to work back so we go what's going to be the best thing that I can eat now to fuel my day to get to the end of the day to be full of vi vitality and, and have my best day to live my best life if we find ourselves framing our best life as our most productive life yeah. How can I get the most things ticked off the to-do list? How do I, what breakfast do I have to enable me to be a success by doing more of the to-do list tasks than, than anybody else or than I did yesterday? Where's the pleasure? Where's the ease? Where's the need? Where's the want? Because if, so for example, if I've not slept very well, mm -hmm. and let's say hypothetically I've got children, and so they've got some like kid, kid, kid flavored cereal, like Cocoa Pops. Let's say Cocoa, I don't know if we can use that. No, let's use um, chocolate, chocolate crispy puffs. <laughs> Great. Other brands are available. Right, generic children's cereal. And we wake up and every morning we tend to have oatmeal with fresh fruit and, you know, organic honey and, a, you know, a lemon and echinacea tea or whatever. And we wake up and we've had a, a rough night. Do I live my best life by having the thing that takes longer to prepare it's not it's not necessarily as tasty. Sometimes I just want a sugary, sugary something. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm gonna have a bowl of chocolate crispy puffs. That to me is self-connection. Mm -hmm. That to me is acknowledging that basic human need of connection to the self is honored. Yeah. Agree. And I get to make multiple choices throughout the day as to what I eat, what I drink when i when and where i do those things 
And of course, you know, people who work a nine to five, they sometimes have set breaks and things like that. But if I, if I have the choice on my lunch break at work to go and sit outside and eat my lunch or do a couple of emails while I eat, the only thing I'm sacrificing is one or more of my basic human needs. I'm not, I'm not profiting the company. I'm not profiting the, the company that I go to buy my food from. If I go to buy my food, the only thing I'm doing is sacrificing self-connection. I'm sacrificing connection with nature, hopefully, if you're anywhere near some. Um, I'm, connected, uh, I'm, I'm um, sacrificing my rest mm. because I, like, I can't intentionally eat or enjoy what I'm eating if it is fueling the tapping of to whom it may concern. In response to this email, this is blah, 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 blah. blah. Could this have been, a, you know, could this meeting have been an email? Mm-hmm. Those are the only things I'm sacrificing. I'm not choosing agency. I'm not choosing power. I'm not choosing ease. I'm not choosing pleasure. I'm sacrificing all of those things in order to fulfill this idea of what a best life looks like. Yeah if we're using the framework of productivity and achievement and destination and goal and target and aims in order to frame what we feel a best life or my best version of successful me looks like. Mm-hmm. And I get it. Like I do this. I, I sometimes do this. I have done this a lot over a long period of time and I've been in the arts for a long time. <laughs> and and that is one of one of the most what is the word? It is one of the most insidious lumps of messaging that, that we can receive. Yeah. Which is that if you have chosen play <laughs> as the way in you which you wish in the way in which you wish to exist in this world and be paid for it. You need to suffer. You need to feel pain in order to create. Mm -hmm. What? (laughs) The F word are you talking about? (laughs) It's, it's, yeah. And it's there in everything. It's there in everything. And we commoditize that and we honor that. These method actors who will struggle and go and work on an oil rig to play a person who worked on an oil rig yeah. or the people who, who kill themselves at 40, but they, desi- but they created art. And, the, and I'm like, I, I can't bear the pain with which we are fed in order to, to justify the mm-hmm. choice we made. Oh, that's mine. Thank you. in order to honor the one true part of expression within employment, I suppose, Mm. that is about play. It it feels like such a punishment. Yeah. That the way in which relatives and people talk to us when we say we've made this choice to be an actor or a creator or a maker or a storyteller, and they go, oh, that's hard. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that. Oh, right. Oh. Yeah. And so, just that messaging mm. forces us to decide rather than choose. Yeah. Because as soon, because the amount of people I've heard say, "I'm going to prove them wrong." Yes. We've immediately made that decision not about yeah. this desire that we had in yeah. that first moment. Yeah. Because someone says that's hard, yeah. or I don't think you can do it, or why don't you pick something easier? Or yeah. and I'm like, Yeah. You've you've now made a decision to justify a choice you made. Mm. Absolutely. And I and I wonder if I can ask you, um, 
as we kind of, I mean, there's just been so much in that that's been wonderful and so thought provoking. And I thank you so much for all your words, honestly. And the way that you consider words, I just love. It's something that I really changed when I last spoke to you. I started to really think about how I use language because I think it's really important. As I was just hearing you talk then, especially about the world of, of, of acting, storytelling, creating, I wonder if, was there any part of, this is quite a direct question, um, was there any part of your kind of journey into this, uh, what we, we are now affectionately calling this world, whatever this kind of well-being, mm. claim your space world kind of is, is was there a part of that that was possibly informed by that acting career? Um, because I'm wondering whether actually, you know, hearing you say all those things that we as creatives get all the time from people, you know, the, you know, the amount of times a week I see on Twitter, people saying, yeah, I just got in a taxi. They asked me what I did, said I was an actor. They said, oh, have I seen you in anything? And then it's just mm. like emoji faces, screaming emoji <laughs> faces. It's one of them, isn't it? And you can't blame people for asking, you know, it it, it feels like a, a, a cute little conversation, but to actors, it's really, really hard. There's the word again, hard conversation <laughs> because we've been told that it's difficult. Was there any part of I mean, I know that you you touched upon childhood a little bit there, but is there any part of that kind of, you know, career of acting that made you think that that actually bet bettering your inner work would would help you survive a bit more in the world here in in performing? I don't know how to phrase it. Yeah, and and, and actually, what do I want to say about that. The thing that I have come back to or the thing that I have allowed space for is that everyone is creative, regardless of whether you choose to be a creator or not. Mm. Any choice you make is an act of creation because you're shaping the... the and that, that's part of a large conversation, actually, I think, and, that, and that's something I haven't really allow time for me to think about but that's an interesting oh, point paul's laying the groundwork here for a part two people part yeah. two <laughs> <laughs> series three <laughs> i need to write that down because my brain won't hold it <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i i realized really starkly <clears throat> during the pandemic that I had joined a cult uh, that there was a hierarchy and there was a way you play this system and there were things you weren't allowed to say or feel or express. Mm -hmm. And it took a lot of work to allow myself to believe that because the revolutionary moment the revolution is not people taking action revolution begins when we wonder if there is an easier more graceful more pleasant way of doing something yeah. that's the revolution because there is a moment in which we step out of the system to wonder, just wonder, just be curious if there is another way of doing something where I do not feel so much pain and shame and scarcity. And so that's part of how Claim Your Space, streamlining, just the way I navigate the, wor the world and words came about because... Um, because I, because I love to create, as Paul, mm. the label I use, <clears throat> excuse me, the label I use is irrelevant. Mm. I, Paul. I'm creative because every day I make choices, mm -hmm. not decisions. 
And that's the revolution. If I make every choice I make that is in alignment with my values, not my value perceived, mm-hmm. is a big old middle finger to the system. Yes. Because even if it's a choice made that exists within that system, it is a choice you made. Yeah. Not a pattern you made. learned. Not a shortcut that we just have to get somewhere. And, and, and Bo Burnham is amazing and I, and I love him to pieces. And, uh, you know, he says, we're always trying to get there. And when we get there, it becomes here. <laughs> and we're, we're never getting there. It's a relative term. Yeah. So the, so the space I made for claim your space, streamlining and all that things is, is not to teach. It's not to educate. I don't have answers. All I have is information to gather. Mm. And, I, and I don't need answers. That's been the revolutionary thing yeah. for me is I don't need to know. And it's terrifying and it's weird and it's vulnerable, but it's also so liberating. Yeah, it's freeing. But it takes practice. And that is why I say lower the stakes. Yeah. In what, in what way can I make a conscious choice right now? gets you really specific it invites you into specificity yeah so my workshop is about inviting people to notice stories that they tell through the things that they keep and then to make a choice based on what's true in this moment to allow space for shame and scarcity stories to exist and then to not use them as the filter through which we make that choice and it's 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 the world I want to see. It's the way I want to uh, live in. It's the world yeah. I want to just, it's the way I want to exist. Yes. Knowing that the system is huge and is going to take a whole heap of everything to change it. But I don't have to be responsible for changing the world and yeah. neither does anybody else. It is in conscious choice that we will we will vibrate and resonate and cause a ripple that we do not need to know where it's going or what it's going to do. Mm. Ah, such beautiful words. Thank you. You Thank are you for inviting me on. Oh, you're just, you're one of life's gorgeous humans and just some, you know, so I was going to say so much of what you've said, but all of what you've said is just, it, it, it hits really here you know, in the heart, it, it really does. It's it's really part of what I wanted to do with these conversations is just have a few things that that hit people, that make them, you know, go away from listening to something, feeling uplifted, feeling like there's, there's, there's people in the world who want to create a space that is is happier and easier, um, lowered stakes, to use your phrase, which is going to become my mo- most favourite phrase. Um <laughs> I usually ask people to round up with some top tips, but your ending there was just beautiful. You know, it kind of did that anyway, which was, you know, to really lower the stakes at ease in this moment. That That's something that I'm just going to take forward. Um, thank you so much for your time. And it's not been easy because people <laughs> need to jump over to YouTube to see the gorgeous castle. <laughs> it's not a castle, is it? <laughs> Well, it's a hotel, but I don't know what it used to be. Maybe it was some, you know, rich white person's home. <laughs> it's a pretty beautiful sand, sandstone possible brick there. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, so thank you so much for your time. It's been amazing. And uh, we shall put all the links to everything so that if anybody does want to connect with you, then, uh, yeah, uh, I know that they get so much from it. So thank I you, Paul. Thanks, Manny. Thank you so much for joining us on Wellbeing with Manny in conversation with and thank you for being part of our community. It really is all for you. It's all purpose driven and I really hope that you've got something from the episode today. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to share it with anyone who you feel would benefit from hearing these open and real conversations. Please make sure that you are following and you are subscribed to make sure you never miss an episode, either on your app of choice or on YouTube. And if you can, please rate and review the channel. That would be so, so helpful because it helps other people find us. 
And finally, just remember that it is all about talking. It is all about sharing. So think, reach out. Who will you have a conversation with? Have a fabulous week. See you next week.